Hello, everyone. Welcome back to uh, High Wasp. Yeah, we are on volume 17. Uh, yes, this is the fellas. Welcome to the penultima volume whatsoever. Another night of laughter and camaraderie. Another night of joy and communion with some totally normal teens who will never <clears throat> age. <laughs> just kidding, idiot. You are still on Altonia. Uh, you just know one of these miserable chuckle fucks is around here somewhere, waiting for the exact moment to inundate you with another disgusting dose of friendship. <laughs> disgusting dose? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I need my shot. Who is going to be an orchard of your destruction this accursed evening? There's a. Uh, 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 la 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 la. Let's go. <laughs> Your feet drag as you walk, uh, every limb heavy and slow, and your thoughts are cloudy and dull. Your palm mask is filled with unanswered text. You feel guilty about this in the back of your mind, where real feelings live crammed together because the front of your mind is too busy being lethargic and numbed. Your bad friend goes against the core tenets of your beliefs, but answering tests just seem like too much effort. You're not sure where this particular malaise came from, but just the usual friend-making animus that drive you is still there, but it doesn't feel strong enough to overcome how tired you are of everything else, I guess. We... <laughs> guess... <laughs> it helps, but not that much. You cannot quite remember how you felt to care that much about the companionship in the camaraderie. In fact, right now you cannot remember how you felt to care about much of anything. Your thoughts drift. To fantasy of driving your car into the inhabited alternate desert until you run out of fuel and perhaps letting the sun have its way with you. It could be part of what, of that feeling that you almost better all the friends they are to make and they are still left for you to do on this planet. It could be a week of trauma catching up and sinking you into depression to protect you from thinking about it all. Either way, it just feels like so much effort to do anything and you're sort of welcome oblivion if it is showed up right now to offer its sweet embrace. <laughs> why we all... <laughs> I mean, why we want to die so much? <laughs> okay. Your listless walking has taken you into a familiar neighborhood. Ah, the cerulean part of town. You smile as you reminisce sweet memories, peeking through like beams of sunlight through the fog of your apathy. Not far from here is Malek Hives, with all of its hacking equipment and charming upper-middle-class atmosphere of entitlement and complacence mixed with vaguely socially aware concern, and though you've only seen a picture of it on Chitra, you know that Remelez Hipster's Art Studio Hive is also in the neighborhood, and one block over in Ardadal Place, which gave you gruesome and troubling introduction to Alternia Social Moors. One thought you love. What told you patience? What told you pain? Or something like that. <laughs> nice. Anyway, the hive you cl uh, the hive you closest to is uh, actually Elward, and as you shamble closer, you realize that a lot of other trolls seem to be covering. Conver converging here to finish out uh, your palm hubs, you see that the unread message from Elwood is an invitation to party at her place. Actually, let's check this out. You recognize any of this character? Or oh, that dead one there on our uh, left? Or maybe just vomit? I hope you just vomit at this point. Looking around you, you feel flame of your old desire to meet a greet rekindly in your heart. There are plenty of trolls here you haven't met yet, plenty of opportunity, uh, opportunities for friendship. The normal roaring fire in your belly feels a little artificial, like someone just injected you with friend maybe making hormones to flood out your regular human melancholy. But you are not going to complain because this is vastly preferable. As you are walking briskly towards Elwood's hive, you spot a troll lurking in the shadow by Elwood's back door. Curious, you approach, and when you get closer you can spot the jade green in her outfit. Although there is not much on her blood color in comparison to what most or other trolls seem to sport, because she's mostly wearing black and spikes and black spikes. A stalker! Hey, uh, it's you. Uh, it's me, yeah. <laughs> uh, guess it makes sense you be here. You're probably friend with Elward, huh? Whatever. Uh, whatever. Is she the one uh, we met on the, the coffee? The timeline in the Doom timeline. Yeah, you friend with Albert, but you didn't come here for the party! You're just in the neighborhood, you try to mimic Daria's affected slouch. 
It's not hard because you can just channel the <laughs> channel you from your 60 second ago, who was very disaffected indeed. From the proving arc of Daraya's eyebrow, you think you're doing a pretty good job. Yeah, parties are really aim. Uh, <laughs> most parties are anyway. This one might be cool. Elwards is pretty cool. I mean, she seems alright. I don't think she's that cool. I just think her hair and clothes and personally don't completely suck it all. <laughs> oh my god, is that Sundere? <laughs> Why is so. Why there's strong smell of Sundere? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> totally don't comment on the green blush to Daraya's cheek when she's talking about Albert. Not the way she keeps glancing at the door like she's hoping someone will invite her in. She clearly tried to sneak into this party and doesn't have an invite. <laughs> Of course! When a branch snap in the bushes, Daria startles and look around, shiftily. You wonder if she's supposed to be out of here, or this uh, far from the caverns at all. I'm not a baby like one she. So what if I snuck out? The cloister, cloister rules are so lame, Bronny is so lame. How dare you! Bronny is great! <laughs> I can't believe Albert used to hang out with her, but I guess if she hadn't have befriended Bronny, then I never would have met her. It's hard to meet non jet Blood in the cupboard all the time you're underground with nothing but Lucy and Grubs. And it seems to be jaded uh, jades every day. It sucks down there. Okay. Daria's imitation grab horn bracelets clunk as he, she folds her arms over her chest. Her heavy makeup makes it look like her eyes are twin black holes. Her all sense of fun and caring about things might go to die. Okay. We also have Anima. Perfect. Imotsundere, great combination. She's giving you a mild contrast from how Bronya talk about the caverns, with the peace and quiet safety they offer compared to Alternia's services. Well, another than the time Linera nearly killed you in a cave, and at the time you were nearly trampled by Rapaji Lassus, you remember liking the caverns. <laughs> the caverns sound great! <laughs> Boo, you will think that! I don't know why I told you might be cool, you might be friends with Elward, but you're also friends with uh, Bronya and Linera. They are the most boring toads in this planet. You cannot help but to feel slightly defensive on your friend. Sure, Linera is Linera, but you couldn't call her boring. And Bronya is very fond of rules, it's true, but she can't hang. Uh, whatever. This conversation is dumb. <laughs> Sound like, <laughs> Sound like a, an average teenager thing to say. <laughs> okay, if you can't get me into the party, nothing matters anyway. That sounds like a teenager. Just make your stupid choice and get on with it. Suggest so she goes home. <laughs> Party hard! <laughs> Go fucking home! I I will do this. <laughs> Go home! <laughs> Fuck off! <laughs> Thinking about the J-Blow caverns has got you really missing them. The quiet monotony took you a little grabs to then. Air and darkness, you can take a better place to lie down have a depression now. Perhaps even depression coma. So you straighten up out of your slouch and tell Diaria that regardless of her opinion on Bronya and how cool or lame she is, those cloister rules probably exist for a reason, right? The two of you can go bo <laughs> both go back to the caverns together. Ah, fine, be a goody to strap bot encasement. Gonna be go somewhere well, it's not so lame. And bad ending. Oh, lame, lame, lame. <laughs> anyway, oh god. I thought I was gonna, um, you know, uh, do something else. But I appear to it was what it was uh, supposed to do. I'm shocked. That is not what I meant to do. I'm so fervishly shocked. Party hard! Ah, oh, what the hell, it's not your job to keep anyone in line. It's not like you have the great understanding of why even the older jet blows need to stay underground anyway. If Daraya wants to sneak into party and get into trouble, who are you to say no? Daya expresses no pleasure at your decision to get her into the party. She just shrugs and rolls her eyes. You shrug and roll your eyes back. <laughs> it's like, oh god, fucking damn it. <laughs> Why everyone's rolling eyes? You can play the role of the disaffected team with the best of them. Oh, I'm an expert, I guess. <laughs> because I act, I act like one. <laughs> you take her around to the front door. Hey, you're looking forward to seeing Albert again. When you meet her, you didn't have nearly as many friends as uh, you do now. And in retrospect, you know you came off kind of a psychopath dink. Okay. Would it be great if you could introduce Albert to the new, popular and knowledgeable you? As you're walking up the steps, a huge shadow dwarfs you. Yours, you look to see Kahoot, a Voltros grinding above you. Okay. You're back, Kahoot. Uh, I thought you were in a soma space. 
journey to conquer the universe, but I guess you're back. Uh, you know, military, how is it called? It? Military service? Whatever you would like to call it, this universe? Well, hey, little one. Hey, I remember you. And who is this new little one you got with you? Chehu switches her interest from you to Daraya, granny down a turn. Daraya is a cute for a J blood or anything, but she seems absurdly tiny without looming down at her like that. Her face remains impassive and bored, but she scuffs one of her big black boots on her the ground and twists one of her spiky braces like around on her wrist. Cute. Don't see many little jades outside of the caverns. I've always found greenies fascinating, so devoted to the continuation of the species. What a holy mission. How to move slowly and lazy <laughs> lazily. <laughs> It's in you know, I love it. Oh, <laughs> these are the big guns. <laughs> no, I present you. This is the big one. Kahoot moves slow and lazily, like she has all the time in the world and not conceivable reason to rush, and reaches out to pat Daraya's whole shoulder. She lets her hand linger, one claw resting against Daraya's neck. <laughs> oh, ain't it dangerous for a position to be so far away from your green brothers and sisters? Unless you're hiding something in those pretty veins. Okay. Uh, wh what? <laughs> Kahoot seems more than interest in her. I guess uh, there's something um, under under the <laughs> fucking <laughs> carpet. <clears throat> A slimy chill runs down your spine. Daria seems frozen to the spot, staring straight ahead at Kahoot. Bosom in front of her. You think Kahoot is joking, but it can be hard to tell. With clowns, their humor is just so much more highbrow than everyone else. Just joking. This looks like a good party, even if Albert is too blasphemous for my taste sometimes. See both of you, little one, inside. And then she assembles away, bending down to duck inside the door to the party. You hear party sounds, music and laughter, and clinking drinks, and what could be the sound of someone being murdered! Rocking great! Uh, what could not be any great party in Alsania if there's not murder in it? Or uh, genocide, or whatever the thing you like in this kind of uh, scenarios, which qualifies as party noise on this planet. <clears throat> then the door swings shut again. And you and Daraya look at each other, Daraya's heavy makeup can make it hard to read her expression, but you can still tell her she's rattled. Uh, you know what? It looks like this part is filled with lame conformers! <laughs> All these high bloods that bind buy into the system and do what they're told. Even Albert, we can find something better to do somewhere else. Yeah, to hell with this party! You're <laughs> allowed to find your own fun. Especially that means not putting Daraya in the way of potentially murder happy clowns. I wish I'd probably... Don't judge me, I will probably get, still get to the party. <laughs> Don't judge me, I will still put <laughs> Darius in harm's way. <laughs> you wanna see something dangerous? This is dangerous. <laughs> so goddamn go back to the fucking cave if you're not into this shit. <laughs> no, I'm a terrible teacher. <laughs> As you saunter away from the party, you realize that Darius is looking at you expectantly. Well, you got this reputation for being all unconventional and weird and rebellious. To be honest, it's not that hard in this fucking planet to be considered rebellious or unconventional at all, especially for someone who's not even from there. Iranians seem, seem to think that you are like a totally fucking with the conventional society or whatever. So you got any suggestion for cool shit to do? I absolutely no idea. Should we go and check Remele? I don't know. God, you such felt a lot of pressure to be quick since uh, word has spread about your manic, pixie dream alien ways. It's not like you are trying to be vehicle for other characters to project onto, assisting in character growth inside for those around. While your impulse decision and KLP way somehow keeps you yourself standing forever and change, just seem to sometimes be like that. I'm losing my voice now. God damn it. Oh, damn it. <clears throat> Anyway, you're tired, and it's daunting to have a punk teen expecting you to come up with suggestions for cool stuff. You have a feeling she's just going to shoot down whatever you suggest. No, I agree with that. I guess that, that is a good. Uh, yeah. You rack your brain trying to think of anywhere from you or many adventures that there are might like. You think Pence comes up with a silk and squad, uh, she starts to look forward with you. Confessing that you can't think of anything is probably an option if you want the right to be your friend. And an exhausted and disillusion as you feel with your social life routine, you like her, you want to bond. Uh, don't know what you want to do. Monday is still like hot mulums. Uh, I guess. So what you want to do? 
without that idea that you have no idea for cool things to do because everything on this planet is lame. <laughs> everything is lame! <laughs> but she's from here, doesn't she know anything non lame place to go? Oh yeah, let's beat your hold this bitch! Uh, I told you, I'm stuck underground all the time. It's not my fault that my literary shelter never get to do anything fun. Oops, maybe it was the wrong approach. She's saying please at you, but then Daria speaks loudly and then crosses her arms from her chest. So, do you have anywhere you wanna go in particular that you heard of, brother? I, I mean, let's be honest. I don't know now our place is pretty alright, I guess. I, uh, I think it's a good tactic because they're making the choice, right? I mean, uh, they're choosing going to some places so you can blame them and you know they sucks ass, you know? Yeah, you know? yeah? You know? <laughs> Better than here anyway. It's far though. No problem, you got wheels. You were walking around the neighborhood because, well, you fell alive less than glue. And your car needs alien fuller, which you've been reluctant to ask someone how to get because you don't want to be told it to runs or grab grease, something like that. Well, now you have purpose again, and now. And you are more than willing to provide transportation service of your new friendship goal. You take the ride to your car park a few blocks away and she directs you where to go. What is found the most interesting? Oh, wow. <laughs> that too, okay. But the fun was interesting, do we have cash? <laughs> you drive through neighborhood after neighborhood, through the yellow blood slums where you met Folk and Carbrom, the busy urban sector where you had adventures with Tagora, and the Alsters, Indigo, Blood, Enclave, where Gallic lives. Eventually the building gets sparse and you think about how you were yearning to drive out into that barren landscape and not die. Maybe, but stop, just let it open. I don't think that I will take you all the way out there, uh, out here, just for you to both meet sweet oblivion, but who knows, trolls can be kinda hard to predict. Because when you think you are reached a point where there can be any more city or suburbs left, a rumble of a massive old building come to be. It's almost like a miniature version of the main Altonia city that you used to accept. It's all abandoned and mostly ruined, nothing around here looks inhabitable. Grimmel has it says some of the trolls who live here piss off the condensed. Oh well. So she called it this old town. The whole town? Uh, seem a bit of overkill, but uh, not so overly surprised. That would have been uh, uh, way back in the day. It's ancient history now. Okay, if there were any survivors, I guess they'd be either dead or up in space. Anyway, all these old buildings are kind of sick. There's never anyone else here, and I'm not into that. Okay, we drive until she tells you to stop in front of a huge crumbling, crumbling building that even though this thing is a half gone, you can still tell it's a mole. Oh, is the oh, oh, is the mall that we so fondly stalk? <laughs> uh, sorry, uh, that we fondly talk in Pesta Quest. Finally, the fucking mall was the fucking penultimate chapter. It's take a while to reach the fucking mall, I guess. This seems a bit different from the mall you visited at Pulpia. Even aside from the fact that this is totally dark, there's no inside it. It's in a very more uh, old-fashioned and a lot more like one of your familiar Earth. Every dystopian movie you ever seen has told you to do the extremely worry of abandoned malls and feel pretty nervous as Daria takes you up to the rickety frozen escalator. It's so dark you can barely see your hand in front of your face. <clears throat> You're trying not to show your fear because you don't want to look like a wuss in front of Daria, but you cannot hold back to whimper when your foot landscape Oh sorry, whimper when your foot lands on a step that makes a distinctive about to collapse noise. Boonk! Don't be scared, it's okay to have climbed over this place a thousand times, and it has isn't already disintegrated, it's still enough. You know? And there is no risk of calling out here because, well, everyone already has been called. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Great! She's a uh, gentler towards you than you would have expected, given her cynical and spiky demeanor. You swallow your fear as you reach the top of the escalator and tell her that it's chill, you just have some horror movie associations. My horror movie of a mole, especially of a. Uh, <laughs> Uh, escalator <laughs> is Killa from uh, <laughs> Escape from Tarkin, and it's not a movie, it's a game, <laughs> and it's fucking frightening to have a guy pumping, going full speed towards you <laughs> with, <laughs> with a gun that <laughs> is heavier than his fucking armor. <clears throat> there are turns and pass you stiffly on the arm, you will never tell her this, but her reassuring manner, once that she notices someone in his distress, kind of reminds you of Bronya. Interchange sucks. It's worth it when you get to the cool part. Come on. Oh, is that a ghost? Oh, never mind. 
She continues to be dark for a while, though you see him light up ahead. As you get closer, the hole opens up into a full court. You see the light is moonlight, the shining through the mostly absent roof. And I was right, there is something extremely surreal cool about the, uh, the creepy empty food court with the roof caved in. Rubble sits atop a cafeteria, tables, a plastic food trays, and scattered on the floor. And okay, that might be the remains of a troll skeleton still wearing a mostly disintegrated fast food uniform. Okay. Which is less cool and makes you remember the display to the banner because the content sat drops here to my travel. That's cool. You wanna know the weirdest thing about this mall? It's not from here! It seems like actual adults used to maybe work here. Oh, actual adult. I've gone through a lot of those stores as some of their are for adult size things. And there's a store just like shit, the drone spring you now. Okay. There's an arm supply army supplies for going upward too. If it is more was for adults, it must be really funky nation. Jeez, has it really been that long since there were any adults on this planet? Even after all your time on Arthurian, that still kind of freaks you out. I think because uh, you die before reaching adulthood, right? It is universe at least. And I guess uh, it takes a lot of time to be an adult in this universe. What must be uh, that be like to grow up entirely without adults selling a planet that's nothing but kids? That gives you a weird look. Oh, what would it even be like to have adults down here too? That sounds way more dangerous and stupid. Well, adult sucks, it appears, in this universe. It's not like we all wigglers, trolls have to grow out of the mindset pretty fast. People have responsibilities or whatever the fuck or that, at least they pretend to. And there's a training stuff or jades. You are basically trapped. Maybe you think that a plan of kids will mean you can do whatever you want, but never had any freedom. And uh, even less uh, as an adult, the cloister jades aren't allowed to join the Imperial Army. Instead, we get shipped off to live in, to live in isolation. Okay, 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 okay. So it's not that they die, they simply got sent off. Okay, okay. We are forbidden to contribute genetic material to the slurry, and no paling uh, is allowed once we mature for some do not bullshit old fashioned reason that I pretty much don't understand at all. What? No paling is allowed once we mature. Paling? What does paling mean? What do you mean by paling? What is paling? Okay, you know, I'm gonna google it very quickly. Uh, you, you shush, shush, shush. Okay, so... From what I could find, the appears is not a real word, and uh, it means uh, taking drugs. Whatever drugs they give you. You don't really particularly addicted to a specific drugs, so you only take whatever the fuck they give you. Kind of shit. But that is what I've found. You know, <laughs> still interesting. If I roll paling, meaning nothing pops up, nothing. Uh, like nothing related to paling, or it's like a pile of woods, <laughs> or, uh, or to make a <laughs> to make some sort of uh, wall, <laughs> wood made wall, <laughs> wooden wall. And I'll turn you your future is the tide is like a new hash. You tell me that all the time that I have to have it lucky as a J, J block, but. I don't feel lucky at all. O O F. Yeah, you agree with the writer that the future she describes some bleak in hell, right? It's going to be fucking sunk. And so shitty that I have to be good, I mean, at least I don't have certain early death in my future, unlike a lot of low blots. The system is so fucked up and it's never gonna change, and I hate it here. I just want to away of it. Maybe when you go back to your home planet, you go, make, take me with you? The request comes out uh, left field, and for a few seconds you just blink at her stupidly. Even with all that angry black makeup around her eyes, she just looks so sad, sad and lost. You wish you had a different answer to give her, but you tell her that you can't take her back to your planet because you don't know how, when, or if you're ever going home. I mean, trying not to contemplate the future because on the rare occasion that you don't know that, you let yourself think about it. <laughs> Existential dread tends to take over! Dread, yeah, that's the worst of the night. The older I get, the more I realize how shitty things are. I try not to think about it, just like you. But I still hit some, and still hit home sometimes, and when he does, I don't feel like angry or rebellious. Instead, I feel completely fucking paralyzed. This is too, is a familiar emotion to you? You feel for Daraya, who has wandered over for the middle of the food court and is staring up through the cave in the moons. 
She has her arms propped around her middle and spiky jewelry and jaded haircut and big black boots don't do anything to make her look less small. You wish you knew what you say to make her feel better. You've done a decent job at cheering up at dejected trolls in the past, but it's hard when you're feeling so crappy about your own situation. You muttered something about how things could still get better. You never know what your uh, what the future holds. Yada yada yada. And she looks at you like she knows just how hollow your words are. Uh, you sound just like Bronya. Next, are you gonna tell me how important J Blows are and what honorable this responsibility is? Give me a break. Optimism is for champs and losers. Keeping rats safe doesn't matter. The continuation of our species doesn't matter. Nothing of us do fucking matters. You feel your blood getting hot to, to match the steel that's, uh, uh, that's, that's now in her voice. A sick part of you finds this train of thought a lot more visually satisfying than trying to cheer her up, which wasn't working anyway. You stamp your feet and so does she. I cannot believe anyone bothers trying to carve out a real life on this wordless sheet of our planet. There's no point, we might as well be cold. In the back of your mind, you know you should maybe disagree with some of this, but you're too worked out to care. Maybe that right is right. Maybe nothing matters. That's fucking right. Maybe I should just quit. You felt that your righteous fury, maybe quitting is going a bit far. Maybe the high blows that go around causing death and destruction just because they can have the right idea. That is starting to not sound so great. That doesn't sound great about it. Who cares if I decide they don't, don't want to be a caretaker and instead I just burn shit down for fun? There's no point to do anything. So what does it matter? Who cares? Their iron hands are bowled into fists and her teeth are bare, bare as she glares at you. You open your mouth, maybe you tell her that you care. Even though that will probably sound trite, but no words come out. She scoffs and turns away from you and jumps up on a crumbly looking cafeteria table. You know what? Fuck this. Friendship is a point that has everything else. How dare you! She picks up uh, <laughs> one of the chairs and you really need to stop being surprised at the start of even the scrawniest looking trolls and her is a 10 years fast food stall. Oh, damn it. You thought it was just a random throw at first, but it appears that she was aiming with precision because it crashed into a tank of fuel connected to the oven. Holy fucking shit! She sniped the fucking mole. You're not sure how alternative cooking technology works, but the stall exploding a huge green tinged fireball that knocks you, uh, you on your ass. You're watching horror from your ass level vantage point as the flames slick into the restaurant, on the inner side explosion happening around the food called like dominoes. Daria stands on her table, in the middle of it, and moving even uh, as fire threatens to envelope her. This is probably the only place I actually like on this whole planet, so good riddance. If it's gone, one less thing to care about. With all the dust and the priest, this mold is uh, coming down fast around you. You desperately want to get Daria out of here, but you desperately want to save yourself more, and Daria doesn't look like she wants to be saved. You make a feeble attempt going over her hair and try to grab her around the waist to get her out of here, but she kicked you hard in the chest. Ouch! Her steel tome combat boots send you flying, and it's once again zero days since you last broke your ribs. Oh my fucking shit! My ribs! My lovely lovely ribs! Oh wow, there's so much so so fire! Use this pain as uh, as you are, uh, still takes for a second of lying on the floor, in agony, before you can push yourself up to look back at the food court. A wall of fire now separates you from the tables inside, you can't even see their eye anymore. Your heart sinks, maybe she'll come to, hear, uh, to her senses, you pull herself up out of danger and escape through the cave in the roof, maybe she'll get out some other way. You stumble on your feet, half thinking that maybe you can find water or a fire extinguisher, it's so part of this more. That isn't burning up, but smoke chokes your lungs, and in your panic, your human survival instinct take over. You dash down the escalator, a small infrastructure starts to crumble around you, and you don't want to abandon the Raya, but it's all you can do to get your own sorry self out of there alive. Ladies and gentlemen, game fucking over. Uh, what a... What a timeline, I guess. <laughs> I guess... Uh, uh, options. Lovely. Goodbye.